Hello everybody, this is Sabin Dimitrov coming to you with another fun video about Ark of War and I'm going to show you guys some of the little things that will help you either early in the game or as a reminder for people who have been playing the game for a longer time. So I'm going to be walking through what the main title screen is. Right here, if, um, if you click on, on, um, on, on, this, on this wolf right here, you see uh, where, where, where the little... Uh, white dot is. If you uh, click on, on, on this beautiful wolf here, you can see your commander layout. And with the commanders, you can actually be able to uh, set different kinds of equipment and gems into uh, their, uh, what do you call it, uh, into their uh, equipment slots. And up here, whoop, up here, where, where, where you guys can see the little uh, white dot circling, this bad boy right here is a uh, artificial intelligence or a, uh, a combat AI. And this will give your commander um, leadership bonus uh, percentage as well as, um, as, well as uh, giving them extra perks. These right here, these four different slots, are your commander's abilities. And these bad boys will tell you what characteristics your commander has and how they can be effective in a battle and depending on what you have unlocked you can uh, choose your battles more carefully. This right here where the little white dot on the left side of the screen is how many medals that you need to increase your commander's level. All of my commanders currently, well most of them are level S, but as you can see right here on Sister Wolf, she needs um, 340 more medals to get her to uh, level S. The secondary one right here, this uh, so this is the, uh, the orange line, and then this uh, lower blue line right here. This is their energy, so you can attack a target 16 times before you have to use a, uh, a uh, special energy soda. And energy sodas are, are a little blue vial that looks a lot like that uh, pep juice or that uh, shield juice uh, in Fortnite. And I think it costs about 199 gold for the first time and then increases each time you do it. This number right here that the little white dot is circling around is their leadership. And what this does is that this tells you how many units that you can uh, that you can um, carry. Now depending on the tier of unit units uh, tiers 1 through 12 it will also tell you how many you can have of that one unit. For instance Let's take a quick look at the units. So for the for these bad boys, uh, tier one uh, infantry would be one unit's worth. So you can have, let's say your commander's leadership is fifty thousand. You can have fifty thousand rangers in each of the six slots, and then for yetis, which is a tier one walker you can have 25,000 of those uh, um, of the yetis in each slot. And then you can have 1,000 no, 5,000 um, hummingbirds because these guys are 10 um, units uh, per uh, troop. And as you guys can see throughout each one, they will grow. And they don't always uh, grow uh, evenly. They will grow to a uh, higher level pretty substantially. So uh, we are, as you guys can see, uh, there these units quickly jump up in value. And once you start getting get, start getting into tier twelves, there it's a pretty intense. Uh, Pretty intense. How many, uh, how much leadership you need to actually hold a decent amount of ships. So if you want, you know, more soldiers but less attack, you can go for um, uh, for the infantry. 
But if you want more attack but less units, you can go for the airships. And if you want, you know, an even number of both, or a nice balance, you can go for walkers. But anyway, back to the, to the commanders. This one right here... This is the experience. So let's say your commander is level 1. This will tell you how much experience they need to go up another level. And, uh... There are temples back on the home world that uh, you can actually put your uh, commanders in and those will auto generate uh, experience for yourself and uh, for your commanders so you can uh, level them up without having to kill monsters now my name Chefe I'm on server 1265 if you guys uh, if you guys click on this you, you can see all the information that you have um, and I, and like how well you do in your, uh, and like all your stats on this screen. For instance, I've given 4.5 billion resources. That is a incredible amount of resources to send, um, to your allies. But that's resources donated to help other people grow. And on the PvP uh, weekly and all-time leaderboard, I've actually gotten first place once. And that is very hard to get. You don't get that very often. But yeah, you know, you can see uh, all your information here, all the uh, inter interesting stuff that you have. And you can kind of get an idea of how well you do. And then, uh, my explore record is 330. Uh, uh, level 3, uh, Route 40. I mean, shoot. Level 3, Episode 30. And then this tells you how many units I've killed. This is 3, 6, 246,533,459 units totally killed. And trust me, that number goes up substantially. Especially if you go against commanders who have 1.4 million leadership. And then you see this little tiny uh, on on the right side. This is uh, the 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 red uh, rectangle that says power. If you hit that little triangle, you can see how much um, uh, what, what what makes up your power and why you are that strength. Now, as you guys can see, my soldier power is substantially higher than all my other stuff because I'm trying to focus on what I need and try to get all my soldiers at the highest level possible. Um, my technology power is also incredibly high because I'm focusing on that. A lot of people just try to get everything up as quick as possible, but for me, I'm trying to focus only on airships. So even though my power may be smaller, I still pack quite a mean punch. And uh, yeah, you can you can change your avatar. You see you see this little thing here. You can change your avatar from all the different commanders and skins that you have unlocked. Or you can click on you can click on Sister Wolf, or not Sister Wolf, but change avatar, and then you can click on change avatar frame. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any of these unlocked. They are extremely difficult to get, so don't feel bad when you when you see other people have those. Those are people who are uh, have way too much money and time on their hands. Now. This is the space station. This bad boy, um, yeah, this bad boy is, um, so I, I want to, you know, remind you guys, uh, if you go on, um, if you go down, down to help, right, uh, onto more right here, and then you go on to settings, options, you see this little thing at the bottom left of the screen? You can actually switch the theme of the game, so you can have a different, you know, uh, kind of experience. So if you click on that, you can say, do you want to switch the planet to the planet exploration theme? But for me, I, I don't want to do that because the uh, bright lights hurt my eyes. So if you guys don't understand what I am, you know, what I have on my screen, that's how you guys switch to the, to the theme that I'm using. But anyway, this is the space station. This bad boy right here, 
uh, you unlock after a couple levels. And when you click on that, you have three options. This is a space station, and this is kind of stuff that you have unlocked. And every time you level up, you slowly get more and more of these stats. And you can hit claim, and then uh, and you, you, and you get to uh, accumulate sands of time. And then you see that this little plus right here? I'm currently at level 522, but this little plus on the right end of the screen, if you hit that, you can decompose items, and it tells you right here what they are. You can either decompose one of them, like this, or you can decompose all of them, like this. And there, as you guys can see, I boosted up my uh, level a little bit. And as you guys can see, it says right here, We have established a space station in time and space to conduct in-depth research. This research will broaden our understanding. When the space station uh, reaches a certain level, there is a chance to trigger special events that a special research project will be unlocked. Now, as far as I am understood, I have everything unlocked. But as you guys can see, if you slowly start leveling up your, your research center, you will be will be able to get all of these different little things uh, unlocked. Now, my personal recommendation to you guys is go for marching speed. Don't go for don't go for craft speed. Don't go for evolve speed. Uh, go for commander cure speed and soldier heal speed. You don't need to worry about training or or research or construction. Those other ones will be handled by your guild, who are who will help you. Uh, by their little plus help button right here. Well, it's a little button that will pop up that says help. So I wouldn't recommend that you guys put so much of those into that because you want to save up for the things that will really be essential in the long run. So then over here, right here, at the, the top section is the paraloper. And the paraloper will actually allow you to be able to, uh, um, will be able to, uh, help you, uh, have special abilities for a tamed pet. So you have the uh, giant winged crab, you have the paradragon, you have the amphibious fish, and you have the vector electroray. So, uh, and you have to use uh, meta crystals. Yeah, meta crystals. This is meta energy, and then these are meta crystals. So, uh, with, um, as you guys can see, so uh, the the Vectro, the sorry, the Vector Electro Ray, level seventy one. This bad boy um, will uh, soldiers are healed in the medical center at the same time exceeded twenty thousand population. So if you're uh, here, I want to show you guys. So this is your medical, you know, this is your little medical med medical center right here. You see. And you and you know, depending on on what level and what event is going on, your medical center capacity will be popping up. And if you go over twenty thousand, uh, you know, people or twenty thousand units worth of troops, um, like I showed you earlier in the video, um, over, then the uh, then what will happen is that your uh. You will have a resource efficiency plus forty nine percent, which is really really good considering how much that actually will save you money. And yeah, you if you at the highest level these can get to right now it's level seventy five, and it's kind of difficult to get that, especially when you use meta crystals to heal. But you know um. That saves the resources. So you have different options to do that. And that is where this comes in. This is the this is a advanced medical center that will allow you to use a different energy to heal your soldiers if you don't have the right, you know, uh what you call it uh amount of resources. And then this uh, um, is the shelter. The shelter is kinda stupid because you have to use a a unholy amount of uh, uh, um, crystals to heal your soldiers if they get trapped in here. So, in all honesty, you always want to keep watch over your soldiers because unless you have millions of millions of millions of uh, 
crystals, you're going to have soldiers stuck in here for a substantially long time. And let me tell you, I one time had like a hundred soldiers trapped in here. One of the worst mistakes I made in the game. It took me like months to get them back. So, uh, yeah, so the Vector, the, the vector Electro Ray is a really nice one, especially if you uh, suffer a nasty loss. Then the Giant Winged Crab is pretty nice. And this one gives you a swift getaway. When, when losing a battle, decreases the number of massacred soldiers by 49.2%. So you see, what happens is that, uh, let's say someone attacks your arc. And you can't defend it. And they kill a lot of your soldiers. Uh, here, I'll show you one of my battle reports. Come on. So as you guys, as you guys can see, I attacked a, um, a enemy. And I killed all the soldiers. And then the, then what is remaining, I, I killed and massacred their other soldiers. These little bad boys right here. So, let's say... Uh, Let's say that, um, let's say you lose 300 origins because someone massacres your arc. Instead of, instead of losing 300, you'd only, like, lose, like, 160, maybe 170. So, you save yourself a lot of trouble when you have the, the, the giant winged crab equipped. And this bad boy will, will, will save you a lot of damage, especially if your shield drops and someone hits you hard. Now, in the old game, if someone hit you and you were um, offline, the game would make it so that way your arc disappears off the server temporarily until you sign back in to avoid players just absolutely myrtleizing you. Uh, but, uh... Yeah, um, I'm not sure if that is still a uh, trait in the game, but that was what what they did in the early game to save you from getting absolutely blasted and lost. So whenever people would be off, would would be off, you know, the server for a while because they had to deal with family or medical stuff, they would jump out of the guild, and then one of us would hit them, and we would hit their meat shield. And then that way, uh, even though they, though they lose a lot of, you know, low-tier soldiers, the arc is protected from being zeroed. So then, um... Give me a second, guys. I'll be right back. Alright, guys. I am back. Just had to go quickly handle something, but we're all good now. So we did this, so we did this bad boy for the resource efficiency. And then we did this bad boy for the massacred soldiers, and now we have this guy. So uh, the, uh, the 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 para uh, dragon. This one's a really really nice one because this one will uh, is great for um, a galactic campaign, which is a uh, which is a uh, two guilds from different servers. And battling it out, it out against each other. And you don't have to worry about resources being plundered. You don't have to worry about soldiers permanently dying unless you unless you really screw up. And you don't have to worry about, you know, uh, losing anything. The only thing that, that this costs is speed ups. And speed ups are either used by gold or special uh, speed up uh, tokens that you get to increase... Like, uh, let's say you want to increase your building time, or you want to, I mean, building time used up, or you want to increase, you want, you want to make things go by quicker. This bad boy is, if the injured population of the medical center doesn't exceed, oh, whoops, never mind. This is the wrong one. But yeah, so th this one is, is kind of the first one you will ever unlock. And this one really more is just in a sense of... You can use this, but it's very, very difficult not to go over 62,000. So if you fight 
with small marches and you heal right after, you can save yourself a lot of time, but unfortunately this one just isn't exactly that useful when you get to the bigger levels. Here we are. Now this is the one I was talking to you. This is the one I wanted to tell you guys about for the Galactic Campaign. The Amphibious Fish. This bad boy is a real nice one. So this one has speedy flight. Uh, soldiers healed in the medical center at the same time exceeding 20,000 population. The healing time will be reduced by 49.2%. So let's say it'll take you... Let's say you lose a crap ton of soldiers and you have like 180 days to heal your soldiers. Instead of doing that, it'll only be 90 days. So, um... Yeah, if you actually get these yeah, get these guys to a high enough level, these guys can save you a lot of resources, a lot of time, and a lot of trouble. So, but for me, the uh, what I currently use is the uh, Vector Electro Ray because usually what I do is skirmishes, and you want your resource efficiency to be boosted up. And then, since this video is starting to get a little long. Uh, where is it? There we go. Since this uh, video is trying to get a little long, I'm going to cut it right after I finish this little area. So the, the time and space event is actually kind of cool. So what, what you can do is uh, you can hit this little button at the far... So, uh... This little guy right here. Uh, um, uh, you know how you, you so you guys see how it says 100 out of 100. Uh, you can hit that multiple times to get special uh, airships and uh, special things such as that. And uh, this is the list of like all the stuff that you would have. So you have the, the regular tier one team, commandos, uh, the the the. The, the Leviathan Division, and then Leviathan, and you have the uh, Ares Division, then you have the Ares, and you have the Sled Team, then you have the Sled, you have the Armageddon Team, then you have the Armageddon. And then you have the Quantitized, qu uh, qu uh, quantitized uh, ones, which are like hyper-advanced super ships. And if you uh, put two... Of the two of the of the same quantitized ship together, you get special things like these. Now the highest you can get is level fives. Then you have to use uh, meta crystals to upgrade them. So as you guys can see right here, this is meta crystals, no meta energy, and this is meta crystals. Mm. Yeah, and then so uh, um, um, uh, the best ship to get the, the most of both resources is the Diablo. The Diablo is the most efficient out of all the other ones to actually give you uh, a solid income of both energy and meta. Now... For me, personally, if there was an option to get a ship that has better uh, meta crystals, I'd pick that one, just just because uh, I use those more than I do the energy. But, you know, the, the Diablo is pretty much the best one if you kind of use them evenly, and those are the best ones I have so far. And, you know, uh, so some of these tabs will have a little question mark right here, and if you hit that... That I'll take you to this little area, and uh, um, uh, the uh, the support of the game will actually be able to uh, give you insight. And then, if you have further questions, you see this little tab right here at the top right. If you hit that, then you can talk to an agent. And as you guys can see, my current conversation is I'm trying to figure out what is going on with the advanced airships and their abilities, because uh, like I showed you guys on my previous videos. The tier 12 airships all have special abilities, um, or tier 12 uh, units, just in general, all have special abilities that allow them an extra edge in battle that 
units tier 11 and down do not have. So, um, it's a little frustrating to deal with, but, you know, if you know how to ask the questions, you can get the information that you need. So, I got the information of the IC-1848, I got the information for the Cyan Shuttle, and I have the information for the, uh, AM Ethereals and stuff. But, yeah. So now I'm just, just trying to ask him, like, what kind of special abilities like Terra Space or Ether Impact that uh, the other airships have. So anyway, um... So anyway, uh, then you, th th this little tab right here, at the very top right, if you hit that, you can purchase stuff using real money for the game. And like I was telling you guys, the uh, the, the tier 10 Armageddon, if you get two of the tier 10 Armageddon quantitized and put them together, you will get a tier 5 of a random airship. And that will be something that you can activate or upgrade or do whatever you want to do. Now, um, but this will also give you gold. Unlimited crystals and hyperspace crystals and other kind of things too. So you're not just purchasing stuff for that, you're also getting some other stuff too. But that that comes to about $111 on the Google Play Store. So be careful when you're buying big or else you're gonna, you know, find out that, you know, the, the taxes will hit you when you least expect it. But yeah, so this is the elite airships, and that is what you get when you do the quantitized people together. And then there, there's options where you can hit back, and that will make it so you can send them into space, and then you get returned materials for meta crystals in return, because you're sending them on the way. And then, uh... Yeah. Let's see, uh... And then, uh, this is a quant this is a quantized Ares. And yeah, you can just hit that and have fun with it. Really, this doesn't... I don't, I don't know why they added that you can just tap it, but you can. But, I don't know. It's not exactly of use. But, like it is, I've already hit wave 300, and that's the highest uh, wave you can get. So, yeah, once you get, 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 you get yourself to wave 300, you're set. So, you don't, got, you don't have to worry about it. And then, uh, let's see. So, you see this little sucker down here. The mop-up. The mop-up is extremely annoying to deal with. So, for instance, today... Um... Uh, is, uh, it was a morning mop-up, and then the next day, it will be a evening mop-up, and then the next day will be a morning mop-up. So, you can actually get, you know, every 24 hours, a, a, um, a, uh, um, refresh. The problem is, is that if you refresh at the wrong time... Like, before the allotted time or after the allotted time, then you will have to wait a full 48-hour period before you can uh, try again. So, you always want to coordinate with your guild. And what they will do is that they will send little, um... Let's see. Reminders. Uh, that says mop-up. You see? So my friend uh, Osius uh, sends a, a guild mail every day, and it says T and S mop up time, time and space mop up time. And it says your daily mop up starts now. And if you ever get get confused what time that they sent it, this is this is a year, this is a month, and this is a day. This is the hour, this is a minute, this is the second. So year two, uh, 2022, the day is the sixth. No, sorry, the month is the 6th, and the day is is the 4th. Remember, you, you are dealing with uh, with a Chinese-built game. They aren't like... that. They aren't like crazy Americans who do month, day, year. The rest of us, we like to do uh, year, month, day. And then... Uh, this is... In the ninth hour of the day, the third minute of that hour 
and uh, 29 seconds into that into the 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 fourth uh, the the the, uh, the third minute. So yeah, so as long as you coordinate, you can actually get a uh, a solid system built in, so that way you won't have to worry about you know. Um, so that way you won't have to worry about having to keep track of when stuff is. So I have covered um, uh, the the commanders and, and and their basics and their abilities. Oh, um, as a uh, extra reminder for you guys on the commanders. Uh, um, fourth ability the fourth ability um you'll have to pick out of um this bad boy right here this bad boy right here this is the warp gate and it's a thing called a plug-in skill and the plug-in skill is a special fourth skill that you can add to commanders which will only be level 30 at max but it will still give you the give you the characteristic traits that i've shown you before that I've added on my other commanders, like Vega with his Shockwave. He doesn't originally come with the Shockwave, but I've added Shockwave on him using Dragon Slayer Metals. So yeah, I, I just wanted to give you guys a reminder on that. Remember, you won't get these automatically. You will have to uh, to work and save up all the metals you get from this babble right here. So you can hit that, that that release button, and what the release button will do? How much time we got? Okay, uh, I'm gonna have to wrap this up quickly, but pretty much uh, make things short. So right now, uh, I have it so all metals are automatically recycled into awakening materials, which is uh, special materials that you can use to awaken level S commanders. You see, awaken. And then uh, on this one, there's no awaken. So for awaken, you hit the awaken, and then you can uh, you can do auto awaken. Oh, for some stupid reason, he is not auto awakened. That is unacceptable. Oh wait, never mind. I feel stupid. Sorry, my, my apologies. I thought I was looking at Vega. So Vega, he is auto awakened at 600%. You have to use an incredible amount of uh, cinnabars or uh, awakening a material to get him to level 600%. But in the end, you have uh, some substantial buffs that will really help you in the battlefield. And same thing for Rogers, but he uses a thing called Gaussian Alloy, and that is a uh, also very difficult to get. Uh, the purple materials are harder to get because they uh, are rarer. But if you play the game enough, you can keep yourself with permanently awakened commanders at level 600. But yeah, so yeah, the option called Auto Awaken, it will allow you to always perpetually keep your commanders at max, as long as you make sure you have the right material. But yeah, so it's actually kind of cool because you can go through all of these and save up all your medals and you can see all the different things that you can buy for your commanders for that fourth skill. So as a reminder guys, you have to purchase one medal first and then you have to go over here and research it. And then you can go back over here. So, uh... Let's see. Yeah, th th then you can go back over here. And then purchase these. And then, that, th then of course, that will allow you to be able to upgrade your skills. Oh, look at this, guys. See? This just popped up. Uh, the timer for my free um, uh, reset, I mean, my, my free release, has popped up. And now, I get a free commander. And as you guys can see, he has automatically been, you know... His medals have all, have automatically been turned into a new material for us. But I don't use, uh... I don't use, um, infantry commanders, so I can just turn those into magazines. So, um... Yeah, as you guys can see, if you if you release ten commanders, which is that that, that purple uh, chip, that will um, 
give you a guaranteed 1B class commander. Or, if there's a special event going on, there's a chance you can get that event commander. And then, uh, there's other ones where you can do the, uh, release 1. But, I never do the release 1. But, the release 1, every 24 hours after you hit that uh, reset after that when you use that that free option then you have to wait 24 hours for that to become you know available again at the time that you hit that release so sadly those won't roll over so you, if you stay off for 10 days you won't get an automatic uh, free 10 commanders that's not how it works sadly but yeah so I just want to do to give you guys the inside of two applications of the game and it's actually really really cool um but yeah you know another really cool option is that uh you can hit that hit this little, little, little uh exclamation mark up here and this will tell you kind of a cute little backstory of the commanders rogers used to be like you a captain feared across the known universe until a painful Defeat took his right eye. Now, as you guys know, I am actually blind in my right eye. So Rogers and I go through a lot of the same when it comes to that. But hey, you know, just because you may only have one eye does not mean that you are useless. You can sometimes be will be one of the most valuable assets. As long as you don't let your disabilities or problems hold you back, you can be an extremely effective individual. But anyway, so if you hit this little, 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 little question mark down here by, uh, by his coat, this will take you to another option where, you, where, the, uh, where the, um, it's a little page that will explain all the stuff for you. This is kind of what, what I'm doing uh, in, in my video. So Rogers is an S tier, and you see this little, little, little button right here um, at the bottom? If you hit that, you can select different skins, custom skins for your commander. So if you hit the little exclamation mark, you can see your commander in its fullest. This is him at, at his regular, uh, at, at his regular skin. Or you can get Ghost Rogers. Dun dun dun. And uh, he actually looks kind of cool. But in all honesty, I don't really care too much for. Well, I just hit it. Crap. I don't exactly really care too much for the Ghost Rogers, but I mean, it does look kind of cool. And, you know, that's what, 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 what I have for, like, my, 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 my different commanders, you know? Dragon Slayer, she has two skins. This is her regular skin. Kind of, kind of cool looking. And then Dragon Slayer also has these bad boys. Has this one, where she is rocking and rolling to, this, to those epic tunes. So yeah, you, you can also un unlock these in, a, in special events as well. Now, mind you guys, I have been playing this game for six years now. So I have a lot of experience and uh, time f in, into this game. So don't feel bad if you don't get these for a couple years. Remember, it took me six years to get to where I am now. So as long as you as you become friends with the right people, and as long as you stay in the right guild and you work hard, you can turn yourself into a very valuable and strong commander. Remember, you're not always going to be the best, but you can definitely do your best, and that's the point. You work as a team, and as a team, you all benefit. But yeah, so... um. And then there's another little option where we can hit this. You see this little section right here on the right right hand of the screen? You hit that. And you can pick all your different commanders. All your different commanders and all their information and input. And uh, yeah, it just kind of just kind of tells you kind of the cool stuff there. And at the right hand of the screen tells you what they are more good at. This guy is better at attack and assisting, but his defense is low. And, he, and the infantry and walkers can't really be used by him, but the airship can be used. And then this one right here, this one is kind of more even. They are, they are good for attack, greater at defense, and good for uh, assistance. And then for people like Rogers, this bad boy, Rogers is a nasty little sucker. Let's see, let's see if, if I can find him. 
Oh, there's Gollum. Gollum, for the longest time, used to be the, be the best commander in the game, just because of his murderous abilities. But that sadly got uprooted by other things they've added into the game. But anyway, let's go to go to this guy. This guy actually has a really good assistance, and that means he assists his soldiers and lasts longer because of his ability, Quick Replenish, like I told you guys before. So he is great for attack when it comes to the, the breakdown, because that allows him to get to get rid of enemies' defensive buffs. And then because I've added the Shockwave on him, that allows him to do catastrophic damage to the enemy, which I'm going to show you guys a little bit later. And then we're going to find our dear and beautiful Rogers. Where is that bad boy? Where are you, Rogers? I know you are here. Here we are. Rogers, his... Wow, he actually has a pretty high attack, which is quite surprising. But his defense is also way up there as well. So the Tyrant Cometh allows him to be able to, to increase his... Um... Uh, as a, as critical an attack, and that means he's going to be going to be able to do 240 percent more damage. So you can turn him into a decent attack commander, but he's usually better for defensive commanders, and that's what what the defensive stance does. And that's what I told you guys about before. So I've added the absolute defense, which made him even more annoying to deal with. And passive skills can never really quote be truly erased by enemy commanders because since it is a passive skill it is always active it can't you know be just be taken away permanently so rogers or any commander that has absolute defense added to them automatically becomes an extremely annoying person to deal with but yeah so you know i just figured i will we will give you guys kind of the, the, like valuable input these are kind of kind of the biggest sections because these these commanders kind of make up the main part of the game. But I figured I'd show you guys kind of the basics of you know two things: the space station. Give me a quick second, guys. But yeah, guys, you know I just kind of wanted to give you guys a fun insight into the game, so that way you guys could be able to uh, enjoy kind of the uh, the basics uh, of the uh, commanders, their skills, their leadership, their equipment, and um, and that kind of stuff. I'm gonna have to go more in depth into the combat AI a little bit later, but I just kind of wanted to give you guys a quick little. Uh, you know, playthrough of uh, what different things are. So, um, so I have to stop the video now. But you know, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, first step of the introduction video to Ark of War. Anyway, you guys stay awesome. This has been Sabin Dimitrov, aka a dense for the Astro Wolf. It has been a pleasure to have you guys here for my video. So, you guys stay awesome, and always remember, where, where, where is it? It always disappears. Here we are. Okay, there we go. Found it. Anyway, you guys stay awesome. And always remember... Uh, yeah, just stay awesome. And God bless.